Welcome to The Passion Pod with your host, Chris Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. Welcome back, friends. Today we're sitting at UWEC. I took classes here for one semester. No way. That's it. All I did was take like a photography class, yep. and I was like, I don't, I'm kind of like totally done with I'm this. Done but with here this. I am. I'm all the way, I'm actually back in my hometown here, sitting with a guest that I met like a year ago or so in a garage. Yeah. And now he's playing all over the country. So welcome to the show, Landon Conrath. Thanks so much for having me. Dude, in your own words, who are you and what are you passionate about? Um, oh, I love that. Um, well, yeah, my name is Landon Conrath. I'm an artist, producer, um, I guess multi-instrumentalist, whatever that means. But um, in the last year, in the last like three years, have just become more passionate about songwriting. And that was never something that I was passionate about, ever. Um, I was passionate about the drums growing up. So it's been kind of like a shift and now it's become my entire life and I just am super stoked about it and the idea that I get to like communicate things that I'm thinking and I have this like crazy, I just have this avenue that it's like ready to go just to like let the whole world know what I think is like this funny thing to me and it's become something that I, I just really enjoy. So it's kind of caught me by surprise. I never thought I would do this and now I'm just, it's become a huge passion of mine. I feel like it caught a lot of people by surprise that things took off so fast in the last year, which we'll, sure. we'll get to that. But it is crazy that in today's world, people can just like go from playing in a garage to playing all over the country in no, such a short exactly. period of time. So tell me more about the drums, because really not that many people go from playing the drums to then being a singer songwriter, the kind of front of everything. Sure. When did you start playing the drums? And then when did you like, I guess that's such a long time frame to talk yeah, about. No, you're but, good. I can, I can wrap it up. Yeah. Um, yeah give me a summary of it. Sure. Sure. Um, I, like everyone else, started playing piano as a kid. My pian my mom made me take piano lessons. Um, fast forwarding like a ton of years, I broke my wrist in high school because I got hit by a bus, or a car. I got hit by a car when I was riding my bike. Um, and it made me have to not be able to play piano. And so I um, was like, screw this, I'm gonna take drum lessons. And because um, I could like hold the two sticks more or less. And I yeah. was like, I still want to make music. So I tried playing drums and um, it just kind of took off from there. I had a teacher named Steve Gould, and he um, was the drummer with like a lot of artists like Sarah Bareilles and Al City and stuff. And I just looked up to him so much. I just like that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be a session drummer and like just play on people's records. Cool. Um, and so in college, I studied jazz drums and I studied like I just went really hard after that. And then it all just kind of switched when. I, in 2020, we all had a bunch of free time, obviously. <laughs> yeah, something happened. Yeah, something crazy happened, I think you guys know. And um, I had a friend who was looking to start producing music, and I had just written my first song because the cliche, I went through a breakup just like everyone else on planet Earth, and that's why I started writing music. It's not like a cool origin story, but um, <laughs> I, I like showed him a song at like a pool party I was at, and he was like, hey, I'm trying to make music. Like, you want to come over to my parents' house? Let's make this. And so uh, we made the song called Pieces. Um, and I had like a kind of a bad time with it. Like I, it, I wasn't comfortable like forking over creative rights to somebody else. Like letting them put their input into the song was like, I wasn't I wasn't used to that yet because songwriting had this was like my first song that I wrote and it was right. so pr like I was protective of it, and so I wasn't used to that at all. And I wasn't really like wanting to do anything further with it. I was just like that was kind of fun, but I don't know. I'm still just like want to do drums, blah blah. blah. Um, and then the song just kind of got picked up randomly by some algorithm on Spotify and literally by chance, you know, like I have no idea why I got chosen, sure. why that song got pushed or whatever, but people were like, well, we want more music. And so we're like, okay, well, let's try another one. And we did one more song and that was acetone and that got, it caught the ear of some random playlister at Spotify and she put it on this playlist called good vibes and it had like 3 million followers or something. And it just like, it just exploded the song and like, all of a sudden, I had 100,000 people listening to my music, and I was like, I have no idea what's happening, but maybe we should keep making music. I mean, I guess, and now it's at over 10 million streams, I think, when I looked at it today. Yeah, it's, it's weird. So. I was wondering about that, because when I saw you at the show, so what happened is, I interviewed Sawyer Bryce forever ago. We're yep. good, you know, yeah, mutual dude. friends. But he was a guest on the show, because I met him when he was in college.
college and I was like, dude, this is not like the average college no, kid. No, he's crazy. This <laughs> dude is incredible. He has such a vision. Yep. He's going to be something. Yep. And then I also met Charlie and started working with him a incredible little bit. Incredible, too. Yeah, Charlie flattened shot to him. He did a lot of photos for me. He still does a bunch of stuff. Yep. He just hit me up the other day just because he was coming to Eau Claire and wanted to have coffee. And yep. I'm like, he's the this, best, is, dude. this is what a cool he's guy is He's done a like. ton of photos for me, too. He's awesome. Yeah, he's crushing it. And then so they had a, a show at their like frat house, basically, yeah. right? Essentially, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it was just in a garage. And when I went to the show, I was all confused because you were playing everyone like knows all the lyrics to these songs and you're like yeah i haven't put out my first ep yet yeah and me being a little bit older i was like how how but how do you not have you put out just song, like singles like how yeah. did that even work um i think it may have been that i hadn't put out my first record yet but i had like one ep out at that time but it was like my full length hadn't come out yet yeah because it was this was last may 2022 right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so i think i had like two like an ep or two out but my like album was like still coming out it was just like singles had been out yeah so um yeah and i hadn't hadn't really played that many live shows at that time but we had this like weird um crew of people in eau claire it's just like randomly because we had come in the fall too and played at the sandbox which is that garage um we played there like a few months earlier yeah and so we had found this random crew of people that like had heard the music and they really liked it and it was just super fun to come and play for them. It was the best. Yeah, and then coming back here, and then you're going to have to keep coming back and keep coming yep. back and keep coming back. you got to be the headliner next time. We'll see. Yeah, I'd I don't know. To. That, that absolutely has to happen. Yeah. So about writing music, you play the drums, obviously, but you play the guitar on stage. Um, I've always kind of wondered this with kind of like, well, what, what would you call the genre of music that you are, if you had to call it a genre? Yeah, um, I feel like I have been getting better at this potentially. Um, a, a lot of the blogs say like, riff not riff riff based indie pop or like hook guitar, it's like focusing on the guitar riffs because there's yeah i like to try and have a lot of like memorable guitar riffs and i really love just like guitar music in general sure um so like a lot of it is very like i guess you could call it like bandy like yeah. it's a guitar based drums and then like a few synth layers but like we don't try and not go crazy with like using um non instruments i guess um yeah. i love doing like crazy samples on my voice and things like that but i guess it's just like kind of like yeah that like hooky yeah. riff driven indie pop okay so then when you're making music because you guys have the whole band up there yep. but it's just kind of under your name right but yeah. then the other guys all do their own things too like yeah. they have all their own music yep. so when you write music do you play all the individual instruments and kind of put it all together yourself do you yeah. get together with the whole band that you have to yeah. write all the songs how does that work it's super case by case every song is completely different for sure like there's been um a few songs that i did absolutely everything on like even down to mixing and mastering but i don't prefer that like i love collaboration and like um i mean in the beginning i never would have made those songs they wouldn't sound like that at all if i hadn't had it was my friend alex kimball he was the one who we made those first songs with and alex like you hear him all over those tracks like the way that he plays guitar is now the way that i play guitar like he taught me basically everything i owe like my life to that guy but um (laughs) Um, I love collaboration and I love like um, finding my friends who have a specific strength and being like, oh, I need this thing for my song. Like I need a crazy uh, guitar solo. Like I um, I have a song called July and I was like, I want this crazy like 80s tapping guitar solo. And I have this friend, his name's Jasper Nephew and he's the gnarliest guitar player I've ever met in my life. And so I was like, hey, Jasper, like play, can you play your solo on this song? And it made it, I never could have played that guitar solo in my entire life. You know, like if I would have practiced every day, it wouldn't have worked. So it's like getting guys like him to come in and like my guitar player in my band, his name's Caleb and he does a lot of my mixing because he's just, he's so good at it. And it's like, I would rather have someone I know is better than me do the thing because yeah. it's gonna, the overall product's going to be better. And I guess I really enjoy what you, I guess the technical title could be like executive producing, yeah. which is where you're kind of in the captain's chair and you're like, you're moving the chess pieces where they should go. But like, I don't want to call my friends pawns because that sounds really yeah. mean, but like, sure. like you're like, all right, Caleb is awesome at this. I'm going to have him do this. Grant is awesome at this. I'm going to have him do this. And then it all comes together to make this amazing thing. Yeah. And then you just go further, you know? Yeah. Ultimately, it's still, it's your music and has your name on it. So you want to make sure you're in control of the end product of like, okay, I have to be satisfied with where this is. Yeah, exactly. Do you ever have problems where you're not super satisfied with something that somebody's doing and they're stoked on it and you get the little bit of a like, hey, dude, I asked you to do this thing. I did this guitar solo. I'm not happy with it. Well, I'm happy with it. Does that come up much? Um, I think luckily I've been getting to a place where I just trust the people that I'm working with so much and i'm like so down with their vision but it does not always happen that way and it's i've definitely had times where i'm like hey i'm 
I just don't think that this is working. Like, let's just do something else. And I think you just get more comfortable and confident in your own opinions as you do art more. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like, I think like everyone um, can get really caught up in like, hey, I want to make a song that sounds like Coin. I want to make a song that sounds like Imagine Dragons. I want to make a song that sounds like this. But it's like the way that people, like the thing that people are interested in is what you bring to the table. And so it's like, if you're not happy with it, then it's like, don't put it out and like make something that you're really excited about. And like, that's what you're going to be the most passionate about. And people, people pick up on that. Like when you're passionate about something, they're like more interested in it. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, and they, so they see that energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, do you think that that plays a, a part into why people put out singles instead of albums a little bit more often? Because albums sometimes, I mean, I think it's got to be hard when you put out an album, you got 12 songs or whatever to like genuinely be hyped on yep. every single one. Yep. You just have pressure that has to come out. You know yep. what I mean? Versus singles, it's kind of like just whenever one is done and yep. you're happy, you put it out. Yeah, I have a really mixed feelings about singles versus albums because i think singles are so fun because there is like you're saying energy and hype behind them and it's like everyone's like oh my gosh we've been hearing this song for two months we're so excited but i also hate that the fact i hate that everyone feels like every song they put out has to be the one that's going to change their life yeah sure um i wish that wasn't the case i wish we could just put out music that we were like excited about and like yeah, like this song meant something to me at one point. Maybe it's not like the craziest thing ever right now, but like six months ago, it was really important to me. I still want to put it on my record, but like I hate the idea that it's like, like we were talking earlier a little bit about TikTok, and I think that's been a damaging thing where it's like every song you put out should change your life. That's like what the narrative is right now. And it's like, if it's not exploding your Spotify, like, why did you put out that song? Yeah, it's, you know? it's virality. Everyone's trying to go viral no matter what they're doing. Yeah. I think it does look a little like looking for attention kind of a thing sure. and, and you don't necessarily stay true and what the other problem with going viral anyways is if you have one thing go and you haven't built up to that at all and you don't have a catalog or anything yep. else then you can't take advantage of that opportunity yeah, anyways you'll be right? flailing yeah 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 it's just not gonna work let's get to our first song break what's the yeah. song you want to play right now we can play three of yours through the show so what's um, the first one you want to play hmm let's try let's do science fiction i don't think i know that one sweet i like that it's a little deeper but I think it's my favorite song. (laughs) Hell yeah. I guess everybody knows I'm afraid, I'm afraid What could possibly go wrong? Everything, everything Do you really even care? Either way, either way Isn't everybody Just what to say I've been doing it anyway Run around from my mind Escape is fine today fill my head up with gamma rays ain't been feeling myself these days got a text from the cia it's fine fine Yeah. 
Thank you so much for that song. Was that on the Was that on the EP, the album that came out? Nothing, yeah. Nothing yes. matters. Nothing matters. Anyways. Cool. Yep. When did you come out with that? That was like. Yeah, it was January? this fall actually. Um, oh, it was in the fall. I think it was. Man, I don't remember. I, I believe it was October. October something. Oh my gosh, I don't remember. It was in October. How did you find time to even do that? Because from following you, like I said, we met like a year ago, and we've been following each other on social media since yep. then. It seems like you're never at home. Like, yep. when did you record, anyways? Because you're always going. Yep. Um, it's been kind of. Whenever I'm home, we've been just like going crazy, and even on this last run on the road, I. <laughs> I probably shouldn't ever post this picture online because it's probably illegal. I was recording vocals while driving. Oh, God. <laughs> and we were, like, doing stuff in the car. Caleb was mixing, like, on his headphones. We sent stuff to mastering, just, like, checking it on car speakers and stuff. So, like, we've been working while we've been traveling. But um, Nothing Matters Anyways was just kind of a whirlwind experience because I was putting um, songs out as they were, like, getting done. So I, I knew I had this end goal of eight songs, but I didn't have them all done at the time that I, like, set out to make it. And so I'm on a record label called Network. And so they like had planned my release schedule for me. And so I was just like racing to keep up. And so I put out the first single for that project almost a year earlier in February of 2022. Yeah, 2022. It's called Last Week. And that just like started the race. And right after that, it was just like work on the next song, put it out, work on the next song, put it out and just like try and keep up. Sure. Yeah. And I feel like it would be a really hard to keep up. So I guess that's my question for you is like things did pop off for you really fast not Mm -hmm. that you didn't have any musical background or anything like you've been doing stuff but still it went from zero to 100 really really quick did you feel like prepared did you feel a little yeah it came too fast how did you adjust to all that kind of thing um it felt super fake for a really long time because it happened over pandemic was like when most of the stuff went off for the first time like in 2020 so it's been like three years of kind of building but in the beginning it was just like zero to 100 so fast like you're saying but um it felt like my career was constantly hanging in the balance of a single playlist editor because it was it literally was it was built on nothing it was built on kind of the accidental discovery of one of my songs and i had never played live music because it was illegal because that was that was quarantine yeah and so i'd never played a show i didn't have any fans that were real really my instagram was like still i had like 700 followers or something because they were just like my high school friends you know (laughs) like college friends um So it felt like the rug could be pulled out at any moment. And I think I carried that for a really long time. And I still think I wake up sometimes and I'm like checking my Spotify being like, is anyone still listening? Because like something could have happened last night and everyone just vanished. You know, I think I still carry a lot of that because that was just it actually happened um, in 2021. um, The girl who worked at Spotify, who was like plugging my music, she um, left and she started to work at a different management company. Yeah. And so my music wasn't getting put on these playlists anymore, and I lost 60% of my listeners. Oh, wow. I went from, like, 180,000 people listening to my music to, like, 60,000. Sure. And which is still, like, in, uh, yeah. unimaginable about to me at that time. was right. still, like, so stoked. But it was just like, oh, my gosh, it, my worst fear happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, my, the rug was pulled away. And I've been building it back up, but it still sometimes it just feels like it could go away at any moment. Yeah, imposter syndrome is, is a very real thing. Did yep. you ever have a coming to kind of moment of impo- well, imposter syndrome is what we're talking about, yep. right? Yeah. Did you ever have a moment that kind of clicked with you where you're like, mm, no, okay, I am supposed to be here. Like this, I am doing the right thing. Um, I think I've just really wrestled with um, like the reason for what I, why I do this because um. I think I'll always kind of have a lot of self-doubt. I just, um, I have a ton of self-doubt in general. Sure. I always feel like somebody else in the room can do it better than I can because I'm surrounded by like crazy talented right. people. Sure. Um, I'm the worst guitar player on the stage, <laughs> you know, like when we're playing, when we're playing, like it's true. So um, I think I have realized that um, there's a lot of people who can do what I do, but I do feel um just really like we were saying earlier like if i wasn't doing music full time i would do this in my free time right you know and it's like this is still the thing that i'm most excited about in life doing music and so that's been kind of like well if i can make money from this and if i can like impact people and going on tour helps so much um because you get to meet people who have been touched by the music and that's like that's such like a sappy way to say it like touched by the music but it's Uh, true it's like you hear people and they're like this song meant something to me in a really bad part of my life and you're like okay well that's amazing like thank you so much for sharing that with me and um i think that's like the way that i've like been like yeah i want to keep doing this because there's people who have connected with it and i like doing it you know and that's all that matters like if i like doing it 
that's enough for me right now. Yeah. You know? Well, and you have really good imagery in your lyrics and stuff. Yeah, like thank when you. you're I was listening to it with uh um with my girlfriend earlier oh, today sick. and I was like, yeah, cuz she had never heard it. Oh, right. And I played it and she's like, "Whoa, I kind of like I do dig this." Yeah. And I was like, "I'm just going to say it. I think this dude like could blow up huge. Yeah, sick. This music could easily fit on the radio." Yeah, Absolutely. Sick. But without being like radio boring. Yeah, you know I what I mean? You. Like I got it, you. but yeah, exactly. Yep. So, with having the band cuz I saw like Caleb's doing his own shows and which I yep. think it's super sick that like you hop on and still help out your friends yeah. too, right? Like yeah. you're drumming for him for yep. his shows yep. and it's all about him. You like yep. step into the back, which I think is cool. Yeah. How do you guys organize like everybody else wants to do their own thing? You're kind of super in demand for going places. Yep. Do you have the same band all the time always? Yep. Do they just clear their schedules to come with? How um, does it work? Yeah, that's been like a thing that we're still discovering for sure. And it was a tension point for a second where we're like they felt like they had to give up their lives for me. And I was yeah. like, guys, like, I don't want you to do that. Like, I don't need you to do this as a favor. Cause it felt like they were doing it as a favor. And I was like, I want you to do what you want to do. I am happy to have you here, but like, I'm not forcing you. And right. I, I like, we had to, we had to have like a lot of talks about that. Just be like, Hey, like, I am so stoked that you guys are here, but I'm not going to force you to, but they've all just kind of been enjoying it so much. And we've been having such a blast that they're like, well, we want to be here too. And right now we're in this kind of honeymoon sweet spot where everything's just kind of working like yeah. it's caleb is playing like sporadic enough shows that it's just our schedules have all lined up we're like we're all home for his shows and we're gone when we're playing mine and it's all worked out um but i i know that there's going to be a breaking point eventually yeah. where this won't the bubble will burst and we'll probably have to get um some new bandmates but luckily i've got like a pretty deep list of friends who play music so like there's a guy, uh, my other roommate named Brian, he's played guitar for us a bunch, like subbed. Sure. Um, and yeah, we, we kind of make it work. We're very fluid with the bands. Like even Caleb, like um, I've had to miss some shows and Michael will play drums for him. And it's just like, we're all just like in this kind of big circle of friends and we all just will kind of hop wherever we need to and it's been really great so far that's a beautiful part about you guys being so young and yeah. not having quite as many responsibilities yeah, as kids ex and everything exactly. else and you guys aren't jaded from going on tour too many times yet yep. it's still exciting to do all that kind of totally thing. yeah so it'll be it'll be cool to go see where that goes i am curious too i mean you get put on playlists and stuff right which yep. is one of the ways that you get like a ton of a ton of um listens and whatever but it's hard to build loyal fans necessarily through that because a lot Definitely. of times you they don't even know they heard the song exactly. it was just playing through yep how do you how have you been able to build that so that way when you go to somewhere like pittsburgh or you yep. go to la that you know you're gonna have fans there because yep. you have it all over the country yeah um i think um i'll start with the way that i'm bad at it is i am not good at social media yet and i'm still trying to figure that out because i think that's such a powerful tool and i want that to be a thing that i'm strong with um but i think the only way that we've been able to build fans is like super word of mouth right now yeah. like um people had a good time at a show and then they tell all their friends or something and then they've they've been coming back and something that we really like as our whole band camp um values a lot is just like making connections with people and yeah. like saying hello and like looking somebody in the eyes and being like thanks for coming um we love to go back to the merch table after shows and like sign a t-shirt or like just say hey or like ask a question we like a lot of times they'll be like so do you like go to school around here like what's your major you know just like asking people that little thing and then they remember the show and then they invite five people next time you yeah. know and i think that's been like the way that we've built dedicated fans is just like trying to be super involved with our fans yeah. And, like, I love to talk to every single one of them and, like, meet people. And that's why it's fun to play these 50-person shows. Like, in Pittsburgh, like you just mentioned, we just played to, like, 40 people there the other week. Oh, cool. And it's like we get to talk to every single one of them, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's fun. So... I think that's been a way that we've been able to build up a fan base for sure. Yeah, well, and that's when you, like, have real conversations. It's like, uh, not that many people do that, Yeah. you know? And then there's this weird distance, you mm -hmm. know, between the fans and the artist. And they yep. don't view you as, like, a friend or a peer or any kind yep. of way. You're just this person up here. Exactly. So they don't, they're not emotionally invested either yep. then. In which case, then they're not going to care to really exactly. tell people about, you know, this, yep. that, or whatever. Yep. How have you made it so that way it's not going to be a huge deal if you stop getting put on playlists? What's your thought process on, like, how you can make sure you're okay? Yeah, well the encouraging thing has actually been that I'm not on any right now and, and I'm at the biggest at, place that I've ever yeah, been in <laughs> so it's been like really encouraging um I feel like pretty confident in it right now but um I have been like getting a ton of love on there's this thing on Spotify called radio okay. and it's basically like an algorithmic thing that like if someone's listening to like the coin or like the 1975 and the album stops it will start playing auto playing like affiliated songs or not affiliated uh similar yeah is a better word sure. and so 2 a.m 
one of my songs has been getting a ton of that stuff so like it just gets played right after like people like i was listening to the bad sons album and then right after your song came out and i loved it like blah blah, blah. and so it's like it's fun to like get those kind of people who like the same kind of music so. sure now and i just hear you all the time on my spotify yeah i listened to it when we met and now you pop up all the time <laughs> on my instagram too yeah, i'm like i can't get rid of landon so i guess I gotta, I gotta have him on the show now yeah all right let's get to our second song break what right. song do you want to play um let's do 2 a.m yeah perfect timing for that one that one's really catchy I like yeah that. sick so much for that song selection that one what how many streams is that at like six million or something uh no ten ten that million the, yeah it's wild that's Dang. the one that's big yeah so big. how how did you go you went from i remember you posting something on instagram not crazy long ago that you went from like one million streams total between yep. all of them to yeah. passing like 30 million yeah. in like what 11 months yeah something or, like that or something yep. yeah was it just like i i'm still at a loss of how in the world did it happen that it went that fast like, that's um, so much yeah it like what i was mentioning before the radio stuff it, yeah that was like it that was like it's it started hitting on like eight of my songs sure and then they all just went up by like 400 500 percent yeah and um i think last june i was at two hundred thousand monthly listeners and then it just kind of every month was going up by like two hundred thousand until it popped up at pop it topped out at like 1.1 million or something yeah i saw you post that too and i was yeah. like what and then what? you've been getting all this media coverage yeah, like people have been well i guess here we're talking now too yeah. so now you're on your biggest <laughs> media coverage ever yeah dude i love it so but, where's music at right now because you guys are obviously like constantly touring are you trying to work on another album yeah or it's actually really fun i um I've been, I like went through kind of like the worst year ever in the last like year with like, um, just like a lot of crazy personal things, like, sure. um, discovering a lot of new things about myself. I like went on medication for the first time, like just a lot of crazy things that were really hard. And I kind of had this just like outpouring waterfall of music that happened in the fall and winter. And I wrote just like a million songs and, um, 
I have a six song EP that's like coming out in the summer and then another six song EP that's coming out in the fall and next winter and then I'm already like six songs deep into my next record writing so I feel like really ahead of the game right now Yeah. and it's been something that I've never experienced before because sure. I've always been like like I was mentioning before like catching up to the next deadline so now I'm like kind of cruise Finally control ahead. like yeah. yeah like feeling really just excited to play live music is what we've been really focusing on right now but yeah i've just been writing a lot and i'm about to go to la for like a week and a half and just gonna like work on a bunch more stuff hang out with some people so are you playing a lot of shows or it's more just like working on music no it's literally just writing oh, cool. um, my manager lives out there sure. um he just got a new place and we're like going to help him like move in and stuff but oh, cool. i'm gonna do just a bunch of sessions cool things. yeah so how do you feel right now about your music and in general the music career from right now versus like a year ago because sure. it's a dra- like now it's very obviously going to be a full-time career yeah. but even just a year ago there was still like a well things are going yeah you know yeah i think it's i've just been getting more confident in it all and like even like playing live i just feel a lot more comfortable on stage and like just like um i don't know everything feels a little bit more realistic maybe sure. and like um i think it felt the best finally when my like grandparents have started to like catch on that it's like something that's legitimate you know because oh, it's yeah. like hard to communicate sometimes to people that like um what you do isn't just you're not like just wasting your life away because i own a skateboard shop i get no, it no i know exactly yeah. like people <laughs> like they look at me and they're like all oh, right yeah like you didn't you're not using your college degree blah 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 because i have a computer science degree and i like i think that like catches a lot of people off guard and they're like mad at me for not using that or something i don't know yeah um but i don't know i think i've just become a lot more sure of it and being like yeah this is what i like doing this is what i want to do and i feel like i'm good at it so i'm going to keep going kind of yeah i think a lot of people that think you're good at it. yeah i appreciate that (laughs) what are your goals for the next like year or two what are you hoping to do are you hoping to get to 30 million monthly listeners Um, i I, I try to like never this is super cliche and i think it's like the most people always say this but try to not let the numbers get to you um but it is really something that i really try and not care too much about because um, there's like a level to where it legitimizes you where that's good and it's like if you reach out to a venue and they see that you have X amount of month listeners they're like oh, okay yeah we'll book you because yeah. you, you seem legitimate so it's like there's a good baseline where it's like good to have a presence online but if you were always just chasing that I think that's just you're going to be sad because like even right now I'm like I've just been declining in the past three months like I'm like down and you're down with like 900,000 monthly listeners or something yeah (laughs) yeah, it's it's still funny but yes but like you know it's like it's going back it feels like oh no I'm going backwards you know but if that's all you're looking at like that all comes in waves um and so I think like what I'm trying to do in this next year is just like continue to build the live audience um that's something that I'm just really valuing right now and just keep trying to like make music that feels like myself and I've really been into just like more um um, like raw music as in like um, live more live things like live drums live like oh, sure. using real amps and things and like just making it feel more like a band which yeah. has been really fun so I'm trying to do a lot more of that um, I still would really love to harness social media a bit more because I think it's so powerful yeah. and I think it's it can be used in a good way there are so many bands who are doing it in a great way and I would love to kind of find my own space. I just haven't found what feels unique or like unique about me and feels genuine sure. because I think that's like where you have to land. Yeah, that's a big part of it. I'm not going to lie. I've definitely shown people your things before oh, cool. and then said as well, his, his Instagram is not a good representation yeah. of like how much this dude is killing it. And yep. like, I've, I've said exactly. that to people quite a few times. It's true. Yeah. Because you just haven't found your, which is funny because there's so many people who are on the opposite end of the spectrum that yep. focus so much on the social media, but then they don't have any actual content there sure. that matters. Sure. Anything of substance, you know, yeah. versus you're making all the music, but you don't have it on the other end. That's yep. my only concern with it of yep. like, one, it, because you don't have something like Instagram is just a really easy one yep. for like promo and getting out there to tell people like, hey, this merch just dropped. Yep. Or, hey, this thing just dropped or yep. whatever it's hard to have that connection to really build it more into a business yep. for a lot of different things for booking shows and everything else exactly. too have you thought about playing more like festivals have you guys done much of that um we haven't really we've we did like two last summer um and it's always something that i'm really interested in um i have a booking agent at a place called caa um and they do all my booking for me so i I actually don't do too much like reaching out to festivals and things, but yeah. I hope some things come to the pipeline, but I guess I we'll see. I feel like festivals would be good just to get you in front of a lot of different people because yeah, there's so definitely. many people at these things. I yep. think that could really help with getting in front of a different audience. Has it been weird relinquishing so much control to so, cause you kind of have to, yep. but to a manager and to a booking agent, cause all these things are still relatively new. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been, 
um at first it was weird and i had kind of a um not amazing manager situation originally but um i swapped in the last year and it's been like the best thing to ever happen because um what you're really looking for in a manager is just somebody who knows a bunch of people because that you just need someone that's going to advocate for you and like slide you in when the opportunity presents itself right and so my manager brian is great at that and he knows everyone on planet earth and he's like really good at he, everyone loves him because he's a nice guy and so like he can just slide your name in and he'll get you sessions he'll get you shows he got us some tours and things like that and it's just like you just need people like that so i have no problem being like hey you know like that's another like i was talking about earlier it's like he's really yeah. good at that i'm gonna let him do that because i suck at that i suck at email and i suck at like putting myself out there yeah so i'm gonna let brian do that yeah you know? I, I hate pitching yeah I, it's I hate the hearing, worst i hate hearing no and i i realize that even if you get like 10 percent yeses that's still a win i yep. get that whole conversation but my ego can't handle 90 yep. percent i feel you. i just makes me like beat myself up like yeah. well why don't you want to work with me not no, everyone's exactly. gonna work want to work with me it just yep. doesn't work that way at least for me when i dm a bunch of people i just get ghosts sure if they yep. don't want to do it i don't have people hit me back and say no you suck no exactly like, that doesn't really happen okay we're getting towards the end of the show because i know you guys have a million <laughs> things to do but no, i always ask good. the same question at the end of every episode because yep. i think when you do things that you're passionate about for a living you have to have really unique experiences such as playing at the sandbox which yep. is like how could you ever forget yep um what's can you tell us a story of an experience that you're really grateful for but it only happened because you pursued music oh my gosh i mean i think traveling the country has been something that has absolutely changed the way that i like view everything about the world and like seeing how different people do life and like um, an example I use is just like the East Coast in general. The East Coast is like so different from the Midwest in a cool way that I think and getting to see it like with my friends is something that isn't something that normally happens outside of like this really niche niche thing of like touring for music like we're in a van together we're going to a new city every day we just skateboard all day and then we play a show and it's like that's so weird that this is our job and like we do this and that like never ever obviously would have happened unless we all just kind of sent it on this touring thing um you gotta go internationally to really broaden your yeah, horizons man I, I went to europe with um this artist named bear i played guitar for her and um, i saw that yeah. yeah we did like a few shows in the uk last summer um incredible and like now i have this huge heart for the uk and all these people in london that i'm friends with and it's like traveling is the best way to like kind of just like understand that first of all there's like more people out there than you ever thought there were and more different ways to do things and like i mean i came from a small town in the midwest so people are on uh like normally a little bit more closed-minded maybe you know sure. when they i like came from a suburb of minneapolis um so like getting to go and just see how other people do life is really interesting to me and i think it just like makes you a more well-rounded person potentially but um I don't know. The traveling has been the best part, I think, yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, people in the UK, they take their gap year. And I think that's yep. like incredibly helpful just to go. Because I've been around, I think I've been in like nine countries or something. Sure. But whenever you go, you see, even like when I went to Japan and I saw, whoa, people don't really drive in Tokyo at all. Yeah. Like they don't waste money on that. Yeah. What the? Yeah. And then yep. it just like put in perspective of like, well, we just are led to believe you should drive a nice car kind of no matter what, even if there's no real reason. Yeah. You just should. That's an, <laughs> That shows that you're an established adult yep. where we live. When really there's no real reason to be broke like that over no a car. exactly but uh, you find different things like that everywhere or yep. just like how the food tastes in other countries exactly like, oh so if i just ate better and had natural foods yep. without adding all the sugar it would I'd actually taste energy. better in the first place yep. yeah and then yeah. my body feels good yeah awesome well thanks so much for coming on the show i really appreciate it yeah how about you tell us where people can go listen to your music how yep. they can get a hold of you plug your instagram and tell yep. everyone go follow him <laughs> right now please yes yep um so you can find my music wherever you listen to music spotify apple music everything title um and my instagram is just my name landon got landon dot conrath um we'd love to see you out at a show sometime yeah i don't know that's it dude i want to see the kickflip happen <laughs> i gotta get my ollies first dude it took me three years to learn how to kickflip when i was a kid really? i'm, I'm oh, not gonna gosh. lie it took me three years i hope well, it doesn't take you three i'm years. gonna go on a journey then yeah yep. basically thanks again what song should we end with um let's end with acetone oh perfect
plastic, closed casket How did we get this far? How did we get this far? Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.